this one comes from The Ghost of David Koresh. <laughs> Representation in fiction. Uh, David Koresh says, what doesn't, what doesn't get content moderated, demonetized, or often straight up banned by the YouTube thought police? I mean, Vivo corporate execs. And what doesn't offend or, quote, trigger the rigid expectations of current bizarrely sensitive pussy America? Uh, <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm assuming those are some rhetorical questions from uh, Mr. Koresh. I would like to add, I would like to add that um, what happened to you and your people over in Waco was a tragedy and quite frankly, a crime against humanity. And I hope that you and yours are resting in peace. Moving right along. All right, last one here, last one for representation. Uh, this comes from Edmund Stone, author Edmund Stone. He says, a friend of mine had a similar discussion with me recently. He thought I should avoid a topic in one of my books. A lost, in Lost Hope, there is a rape scene. Mind you, it's the bad guy. And he has an Oedipus complex with his dead mother guiding him to do the things he does in order to fulfill a prophecy. The scene is brutal. The girl in question is asleep and has no idea what's happening. I haven't had one negative review regarding the scene, so I didn't see a problem. I think it's all based on a case-by-case -case situation. At least I hope so. My books haven't garnered the attention of the people you speak of, not yet anyway. I may have more to say on the topic once I'm more popular. Personally, I write what I write. And if it's deemed sensitive, I'll deal with it then. Sometimes notoriety is a good way to attract new readers. Amen to that, brother. We can only hope, right? You know, as artists, I call it uh, practicing artistic license. Uh, yes, practicing artistic license. And there is this thing. You did bring up an interesting point, Edmund, that I'll just uh, touch upon and then we'll move on. Is that popularity plays a huge role. When you notice the outrage mob are up in arms, they got their torches and pitchforks. They're reaching for their torches and pitchforks. It's always, always you will notice it has to do with somebody who is popular within the scene. So that right there for me is a little bit of a tell because I always feel like these people are full of shit to begin with. Like they're not really outraged. It's fake outrage. It's virtue signaling. They grab their pitches, their, their torches and pitchforks and they, they join the fake outrage mob because they want something to bitch about. They need, it's almost like, I feel like there's a need within them. There's an emptiness within them. They need something to bitch about. And it works on both sides of the coin. I'm not just, don't, uh, this isn't a political thing. I don't want you to think that I'm addressing the left or the right because they both do the same shit sometimes. They're both guilty of the same shit. Uh, people there, I've seen people on the right and people on the left. People on the right, it pisses me off when I see them like taking the bait from the mainstream, lamestream media, hook, line, and sinker with some of the rage bait that's coming out from the mainstream. And it's like, I see that shit and I chuckle. It makes me chuckle, a chuckle. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I know exactly what you guys are doing. <laughs> but then you have the people on the right, you know, that are like, they, rate, they do the same thing. They take the rage bait and then what do they do? The first thing they do, they hop on YouTube and they start talking about, did you see what they're doing with the little mermaid? It's like, for one, I don't give a shit what's going on with the little mermaid. I'm not interested in the little mermaid personally because I'm a grown man. But 
it's like they're both doing that shit for the same reason. It, and that's what pisses me off is that you know damn well you're doing it for the clout. It's, it's, it's in the news cycle. It's news cycle content. And I hate that shit because I feel like if we're ever going to get past this whole lamestream, mainstream bullshit and, and we're really going to see indie start taking hold, it's going to require content creators to actually start focusing on indie artists who are effectively waiting, just waiting to be discovered. People out here doing good work, doing, uh, you know, great projects. So I can't stand that rage bait bullshit. Yeah. And it's always someone popular too, because it's clout chasing. We gotta get past this clout chasing bullshit. I see it. You know, don't think that you're getting past me. Like I see who the clout chasers are. And it's like, you know, it, for me, it's not like I'm going to like, I'm not going to demonize you for it. For me, it's more of a slap on the wrist thing. Like, come on, man. Like for those that, like the Looney Tunes, it's expected. Like I expect the Looney Tunes to do the ra the rage baiting and clout chasing and virtue signaling. Uh, but some of the other guys, like the you know the more conservative types or whatnot, like I'm like, come on, man, you know better than that. Come on, man, you you can do but you can do better than that. All right. Uh, so that's the that's the hot topic for this week. If you guys want to hop in on this, you want to share your two cents of what's going on. This is an ongoing conversation. So just go ahead. You can leave your comments down below or go ahead and make a video. And uh, I've yet to uh, have any video submissions as far as this segment goes. And I'll react to your video live on the air. You can come at this conversation from any angle that you would like. If you think I'm full of shit and you got something to say about it, hey, go right ahead. Are you a Looney Tune? And you have a reason for being so. Uh, please, you can uh, air your grievances.